Hi, welcome to Easy Engineering. Today we're going to talk about how to choose and use a compressed air operated air knife. Now there are two types of uh, air knives that are on the market. The first is where it's a continuous length, such as this one I have here in my left hand. It can be short, it can be very long. The second is where you have a series of flat chests like this next flow air edger where you put them end to end on a manifold and when you get a continuous length of these uh, individual pieces on a manifold you have an air knife. So which one do you need? First thing you want to look at is the application. How much force do you need at the distance you're going to have that air knife? So if you're blowing off say water or light oil you probably want to choose a continuous length air knife because it's going to use a lot less air than a series of flat jets, which is just the way it is because they're designed differently. And um, if you need a lot more force, uh, such as blowing off maybe uh, thick dirt or something very sticky on the surface where you need a lot more force, you're going to want to use an air knife with a series of these flat jets. And also where you place it. The further you are away from that target, the air is going to spread out a little bit, so you get a little bit. Uh, you get less point source uh, or point force the further you are away. So again, the total force you need and the distance away from the target is going to be very important. Uh, the second thing you want to choose is the length. So how many of these separate flat jets on the manifold do you need, or what continuous length uh, do you need of a of a single piece air knife? So the actual length you need to choose. The third thing you want to consider is the material. If it's a corrosive environment, or if it's a food grade environment, you're going to want to have stainless steel. If it's pharmaceutical, you're only going to want to have 316L stainless steel. And you can usually get air knives of continuous length or individual uh, flat jets in that stainless steel material that you need. If it's just uh, a regular application, normally um, ear edges like this, or flat chests like this tend to come either in plastic or they come in uh, in cast zinc. Plastic is very cheap, but they break easy. So again, goes back to the application. There was one application that uh, where a bunch of plastic flat chests were replaced by air edgers because the plastic pieces just kept breaking and actually created an unsafe situation. So. Uh, the you know metal ones are usually a lot better. Um, if it's a cast zinc material, having a powder coat is going to make is going to protect that surface a lot longer than just having pure zinc. If it's a continuous length aluminum aluminum air knife, which is usually what a standard air knife is usually made from, you're going to want to have that aluminum anodized. It's going to hold up much better in the factory environment. Unanodized aluminum after one year looks pretty bad. So if you're going to be using a continuous length aluminum air knife, it should be anodized. Fourth thing you're going to look at is then is the air supply. You want to make sure that the uh, piping or the hose or uh, whatever is delivering that compressed air to the air knife, whether it's a series of flat chests on a manifold or whether it's a continuous, a continuous length air knife, that that line size is large enough. I have seen a lot of applications where they'll take a very large air knife and they'll have a quarter inch line, 10 feet long delivering air to it, expecting it to have the force that you require. It's not going to happen. Air knives do consume compressed air. The longer they are, the more air it's going to consume. So you want to make sure that that line size is adequate. One way to be sure is to have a pressure gauge mounted a few inches upstream from the air knife connection, and then while the air knife is running, see what that pressure is. If it drops a lot, then your line size is probably a lot too small. So you got to check that air supply. You want to make sure that there's adequate pressure at the entrance to the air knife. And finally, keep it clean. When you're dealing with a compressed air operated air knife, you're dealing with small gaps. If you have a dirty air line, you're going to have that dirt collect inside the air knife and you're going to have spots where it's going to start getting blocked. You'll get uneven flow. So you want to keep it clean with proper filtration. So in summary, Look at the application, how much force you need at the particular distance you're going to be able to mount that air knife, the length that you need, the material has to be chosen properly, and the air supply has to have an adequate line size, adequate pressure, and keep